Uh, I don't know how like to appear as a guest. I'm your host, Cordelia Gaffar, the Emotions Opener. Welcome to the Free to Be Show. Do you remember when you were a young girl, joyful, playful, and carefree? Even into your young adulthood, you were very confident and showed up very present and powerful. Yet somehow, when your role changed, you gave up your power to the powers that be. Join me on an exploration of how the inward shows up in our collective consciousness. Are you taking the time to replenish yourself, body, mind, and soul? Are you enjoying the beauty of the full human experience? Are you free? Let's see. Hello, ladies. Good evening. I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm here with you on Fireside and um, on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, nope, and LinkedIn. So if you're in Fireside, go ahead and click on your link and join us there. Are we hearing feedback? No, not at all. Okay. So I want to welcome you to another pre-season episode of the Free to Be Show. And tonight we're going to be talking about to the elevation of joy bonding. Um, I want to focus on what is elevating to the soul. And you may have never heard of joy bonding. And that's because I created that term. (laughs) And um, let's see. I'm going to mute your microphones because I'm hearing a little bit of feedback on Fireside. So when you hear joy bonding, um, what comes up for you? Do you want to go first, Nicole? Sure. Um, I actually love that term. Um, for me, what comes up, I, I think about just connecting and really tapping into what brings me joy. So, you know, discovering that um, and really just making time for what brings me joy and also connecting in community around what brings me joy instead of, you know, sometimes it's easy for people to talk about and bond around their pain and um, their trauma. So it's like in the script and coming together to raise our elevation um, and talking about things that make us feel good and make us happy. So that's what it means for me. Yeah. I love that. What do you think, Ty? First of all, I just want to say I love this term. And it's interesting because I was like, let me go and um, search this term to see what's out there on it, right? And what's the first thing that I see in Google? It's a Your Beautiful Face and Brains magazine explaining <laughs> what joy bonding is, which is great because mm-hmm. like that magazine has some of the world's like top thinkers. And so I was like, oh, this is awesome. So it's <laughs> lovely to know that you created this term um, because it's one that I hadn't heard before. But when I do think of joy bonding, to me, what really resonates is the idea of connecting with others through happiness. And I love it because I feel like in a world where there's so much that's happening, you know, in a world where there's a lot of injustice and unfairness, it almost seems like people were kind of ostracized for having joy or being joyful. Mm -hmm. And the idea of being able to bond with others through like happiness that comes from within, I think is such a a beautiful concept. So I'm excited to kind of dive more into a conversation about it today. Yeah, I, I um, I love your definitions for joy bonding and you cheated, Ty. <laughs> you read my article. <laughs> so, but that that was really wise of you to, <laughs> to Google search it. Yes, I always Google search things that I'm unfamiliar with. You know what I mean? I don't try to pretend mm-hmm. like I know. And so I was like, oh, this is her. 
She's in the, she's, she's doing the thing. And so when you said that you created it, I was like, well, then this makes sense. No wonder I see her as soon as I go into Google to Google this term. So that's, that was awesome. That was like a nice little surprise. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, well, when I, I, I try to live my terms, right? So I, I have like my own vocabulary and dictionary. And so when I, when I think of joy bonding, I think about how I connect with other souls. And um, uh, it begins with me, right? So when I wake up in the morning, I start with choosing joy mm -hmm. and so that I can emanate that, so that I can attract people with it. Yes. And that's how I met you two ladies, <laughs> right? <laughs> So that's my next question. How did you experience me when we first met? Do you, do you remember how we met? Yeah, I remember. Um, well, it was through Instagram and uh, Vicki Johnson, mutual friend of ours, uh, invited me to speak on her show. And then at the end, she told me, you should really, do you know Cordelia Gaffar? And I was like, I do not. She's like, she's someone you want to get to know. And um, I think it is her that created that connection. And then uh, you reached out to me. You happen to have an event coming up. Uh, I think that very same weekend. And you invited me out to experience the work that you do. And uh, just to see how we could collab and support each other in our work. And I attended and I thought it was amazing. And it was nice and intimate. And I really loved the flow and just how you work with your clients. And, you know, I felt very connected to your energy um, and your joy. You know, I think it kind of oozes out of you. And um, I feel like we definitely vibrate at a similar frequency. And so that's why we were able to um, have such a good and fast connection. And, you know, here we are today, still working together. And we've done a couple of, um, you know, retreats and things together. So um, I'm really excited about how that continues to flow. And yeah, and the three of us. So. I was really um, grateful for the connection and still am. I think you're awesome. Thank you for that, mm -hmm. Nicole. I, um, I remember watching your, your um, Qigong, um, what season was it then? What element was it? I think it was earth and yeah. we were late summer. Yeah, and, it, and I was like, Oh, I need this, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I, I really, I could also feel your joy, even though we hadn't, you know, at that point met in person. Um, and, but then it wasn't different, you know, when we finally met in person, you know, again, it was like that, that uh, connection with your mm -hmm. energy and your heart. Yeah. What about you, Ty? What was your experience of me? My experience with you, um, so I, I met you through the Cowgirl Workout, which is my online fitness program that I created for um, people with vaginas and people who identify as, as women. And um, I remember you wrote me and you were saying that you were enjoying the community and you were enjoying the workouts and that you wanted to connect with me because you felt like our work was pretty much in alignment. And so we set a time to have a conversation. And um, our first conversation was so amazing. It was like, I felt like I was talking to a sister. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited because the one thing I love is like the contrast, right? Like you, you, you wear a hijab, um, which already to me lets me know that you are devoted to your religious practice, which for me means everything because it doesn't matter, you know, what spiritual path you take. You know, um, I'm a spiritual person as well. And so when I see someone that is committed to what they believe, I'm like, yes, this person's already in alignment with me. And so it just, mm -hmm. it felt, it just felt like I was meeting a kindred spirit. 
And then I got a chance to meet you and Nicole in person at Exotica in um, DC. Well, the DMV area, which was great because it's always nice to like see people in the flesh and like to not only feel the energy, but like put put the voices to faces and like in the physical. And so that like feeling both of you guys out in person and feeling your energy, I was like, it matches because sometimes, you know, things don't always translate in person from the internet. And so it was just, it was very pleasant. It was a pleasure. Um, and I feel like I'm always smiling every time we interact, which just, you know, mm-hmm. again, like Nicole says, like you radiate joy. And so it's easy for that to be contagious and to just match that energy. Yeah. That I, I love that you mentioned um, that um, spiritual practice is really important to you, you know, mm-hmm. and would you say that's what gives you your joy? Absolutely. God, you know, my connection to the creator absolutely gives me joy because I understand that, you know, my life is not my own and it's God that gives me purpose. And so knowing that I have a direct connection to the creator gives me joy. Anytime when I feel kind of like uh, disheartened by the world or I feel discouraged by the world, I just remember who's giving me life. Hmm. And I just go right back to the fact that, you know, I've been through so much in life and yet I'm still here. I'm able to, to, to move forward. And then when I think about how my life has impacted and touched others and how my life has been able to be an inspiration for others to feel joy as well, I'm like, okay, well, well then I'm, I'm on purpose. And so, yes, my spirituality most definitely is at the root hmm. of of my joy, my existence, just, you know, mm-hmm. my, my very being. And I feel like I can say this with pride that I know that I'm a, a wonderful representation of the creator. And um, I know that God is proud. So I, um, yeah, that, that brings me joy knowing that I'm making my creator proud. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And um, that, I have the same question for you, Nicole. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, you know, how I start and end my day, you know, in my spiritual practice, um, in a state of reverence um, for the divine, um, knowing that that exists and is me and exists within all things. So um, I recently started a new spiritual practice where I rise between the hours of four and six, which, you know, wasn't easy for me in the beginning, but now I've kind of gotten in a flow um, because there are very highly um, spiritually charged energies prevalent at that time of the morning. Um, And what I do is I do a spiritual bath and I just spend that time with self and with the creator before I dive into my day, you know? So I make sure that I'm nourishing myself first and foremost um, so that I have my cup to a place where I can give, you know, in the work that I do. But, um, you know, meditation, Qigong is all part of my spiritual practice. Um, And just now working and connecting more with my ancestors has um, really elevated me and my joy and just feeling a sense of connection and spirit, you know, all around me. So I'm really grateful. Um, for those shifts. And I've, I definitely know that my spiritual practice has been my saving grace through a crazy year uh, that I've had and really helped to keep me grounded through lots of changes and loss. And um, absolutely, first and foremost, definitely joy. So Yeah, that's a good point, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and for those of you who are watching and not just listening, you'll see that Tayomi um, is only showing a picture. So, um, you know, she's under the weather and not well right now. And, um, you know, so as we're talking about not, um, you know, the, the craziness that we've been going through for the past, I don't know what we want to say. Is it 22 months? <laughs> right? Um, yeah. With this um, kind of imposed imprisonment right Mm -hmm. and still you ladies are finding 
ways to make yourself free to experience joy. Um, and I'm hearing the deep work that you do in the world. So you want to share about, um, before I ask you about your clients, have you experienced any barriers to your own joy um, in the past 22 months? And is that maybe why, in your case, Nicole, you changed your, your spiritual practice recently? Or, you know, Tayomi, whoever feels like you have something to share. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, COVID-19 definitely has created some physical barriers um, when it comes to joy. Um, just moving and flowing in the world as I was used to doing. I know a lot of people are feeling that. Um, you know, just meeting up with a girlfriend and having lunch, you know, those things that we take for granted. Um, and when you don't have access to them, you do miss them. You know, I love going to concerts and to festivals and all these things. Um, love just connecting to people in general. And um, doing that in the way that I used to do it, you know, of course, I don't have, well, it's probably not wise. I know <laughs> those things are still out there. Um, but I, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, people are doing it. It happens. <laughs> yes, yes. But just just feeling um, restricted in some of the ways um, and experiencing some of the things that I used to love to do that I can't do in the way that I used to do. Um, but, you know, we find other ways to connect, you know, and technology definitely has been um, good in that regard, still being able to have those connections. But, you know, I still kind of miss being in community with people in person. So um, that's one thing. Um, as far as experiencing joy, I would say emotions. Sometimes emotions come in and, and kind of block the flow of joy. Um, for me, it's been grief um, and dealing with some loss, loss of transitioning in a relationship and also losing my dad around the same time um, did bring up a lot of grief and sadness for me. And so for me, you know, allowing myself to have those experiences and feel those emotions, but at the same time, knowing that I have tools um, that I've just acquired over the years that I can use to shift those energies when I feel I need to, um, but I would say definitely grief has come up for me as a blocker to my joy. But, you know, I try not to stay there long, you know, um, because I have so many things to be grateful for. So one of the things that shifts and turns that around for me is gratitude. So when I'm in the state of gratitude, then it's much easier to align with my joy. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to acknowledge that Patrick all the way in Sweden. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and staying up. Um, and I guess it's technically Christmas Eve for you. So thank you so much. Great wishes for your continuing health and keep on shining in spite of the clouds in the sky. Oh, I appreciate your comment. Thank you, mm -hmm. Patrick. Um, and so for you, Ty, have you had any barriers to um, feeling free to be joyful in this time? You know, there has been so much that's been occurring over the last two years. I mean, just like Nicole, you know, I transitioned out of a relationship that I thought was gonna be, that was just gonna be it for me, you know what I mean? And um, it was really hard because there were so many layers to have to unpack and I'm still unpacking, you know what I mean? Um, finding myself within it all and taking responsibility for the parts that I played in not showing up for myself um, in a lot of ways in that relationship. Mm. And so on top of a pandemic that completely shifted the way that I was doing business, like I literally fell into a three-day depression. I was on my way to Kenya for the first time. I was going to be teaching a sold out event in Nairobi, 70 women, Wow. 70 women in Nairobi were waiting for me to come there. And I, you know, there's nothing like the in-person interaction and seeing their faces and seeing the joy that mm -hmm. they have of me just showing up. Um, 
and and being with them it's just it's it's an unmatched feeling and so i i did fall into a state of depression for a few days and then i had to shake out of it and say okay well this is the reality now so what are we going to do and i immediately said let's just go online let's just pivot and honestly it was the best decision that i made because not mm -hmm. only was i able to connect with even more women through what i'm doing but I was able to actually help so many women just like maintain their joy and their sanity during this whole lockdown. And it's a blessing. Like it, it shifted my business in a way where I have, I feel so much more joy knowing that even while I am like at home and you know, my body is getting rid of COVID, <laughs> I'm still able to earn a living even in the midst of having COVID because I've had to shift everything online. I've already been interacting online in my business, but to take a class that I've been touring with and, and teaching in person for about five years and then shift it completely online, it was um, the only challenge I had with it was just releasing my attachment to being in person, you know? Um, so, it, there were definitely many challenges that presented themselves within the last, you know, going on two years for me. And even um, finding out that I had a complete blockage in my right sinus, maxillary sinus cavity, which was a blessing to find that out because I was waking up with headaches every day, not understanding mm -hmm. what was going on. And so going through a surgery during the pandemic where no one could be with me and then that surgery going wrong, and, mm -hmm. and like threatening my life. That was very challenging. Like so many things happened in 2020 that showed me my resilience and it showed me my strength. And it also showed me the love that I have around me. And um, every time I look at pictures of myself from 2020, especially from May to July, it's like, I just praise God. Because I'm like, wow, look at how strong you are. And look at look at how amazing the people in your life are. Like my sister, who is a who is a first line worker, she's a, a registered nurse and she works in the ICU. You know, I've I've been there with her through her journey of um, you know, becoming educated and then going out into the world to work as a black nurse in the world where, you know, black nurses aren't always appreciated. Mm -hmm. And just to see the work that she does in the world, but, but using it on me as a patient and helping me to heal exponentially, like the amount of time in which I, I healed from the surgery that I had, which was a very risky surgery. Any surgery that takes place in the head is very, very risky. And so like, I just feel joy waking up every day without headaches. <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. joy every day waking up knowing that I do have another chance at life because it could have really been different. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I am just like Nicole, I just practice gratitude. And when I think about where I've come from and where I am now, I'm like in awe of myself. Mm -hmm like in a matter of two years, literally everything has like completely shifted 180 for me. And um, I, I just, if that's not a definition of joy. <laughs> you guys are like joy mongers. So like, <laughs> right? you know, I just made a new word. <laughs> um, you're joy mongers. Um, yes. I, I just learned so much from mm -hmm. you ladies, you know, it's funny. What we think we actually magnetize into our world. And so when I was trying to make some quick copy to, to throw this up online for the stream yard, I was like, in quotations or in parentheses, I put Joy and Nicole, or, uh, Joy, Joy and Nicole. I changed your name to <laughs> Tayomi and Nicole. <laughs> Our, um, My Joy. name is Joy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are um, experts at creating joy. And mm. I, I wrote that like with not even knowing 
um, how our conversation would go and that you would bless us with your answers to when I'm asking you what have been your barriers to joy, you're like, gratitude. <laughs> like, who says that? Just my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think it's because we, because we are so spiritually inclined, we really understand just what all of this is really for and what it really is. So even though these things can present themselves as blocks to our bliss, we know how to remove them. And we understand that everything ends and begins with us. And so we don't, we, we don't play the victim. We choose to, to, continue to stand in our spaces as co-creators with life mm -hmm. and move through it. And when, when people, like so many people come to me, clients and followers online, and they're so like, how do you do it? Like, I want to be like you, you know? And I'm just be like, man, look, you got to have a lot of, uh, you have to have a lot of faith. It's so much faith to where when things in, things within your perception and in your reality just don't seem to be going your way. You have to maintain that, that knowing that everything is fine, that everything is still conspiring to work with you. And that's not always easy when you're facing some really hard things. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and I, I'll tell you, Anytime I get down on myself, I think about when I was lying on that, on the uh, operating table, going into my second surgery to embolize, um, to, to embolize capillaries that were basically broken and bleeding out, causing a bleed that could have taken my life. And in that moment, I literally had to tell myself and see myself as healed and as whole. And I had to breathe to regulate my nervous system because literally my consciousness, my higher self was saying, if you don't do this, you're going to check out of here. And anytime I, I come upon something that I think is hard, I think about that moment. I'm like, now that was hard, but I made it through. And so it takes extreme faith. And so being women of faith, that's how we're able to say, oh yeah, gratitude, even in the midst of what's hard, because we, we know what it's all for. Yeah, that's so powerful. That's and that's, it really um, transforms your state of being. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, <clears throat> I have to sh share what has been my barrier to joy. Sometimes I, I experience this thing called worry. Have you guys ever experienced it? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a worry wart. So yeah, yes. I was a warrior for war for, for worry. And I guess <laughs> so I have found that for myself, I had to tell worry that you know what? I'm committed to not know you. Mm. And so worry was like, all right, I'll, I'll be back, you know? Mm -hmm. And while I, every time I see her, I'm like, mm -mm, no, girl, <laughs> go on. And then fear comes, right? And mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, you, okay. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm not committed to knowing you either. <laughs> no, that's right. And so then she's like, okay. And y'all can dance together for fear and worry, they just hang out. And I'm just like, oh, that's my cue for joy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's just, when you talk about resilience, that's the, it's not even a game anymore, right? It's mm -hmm. just like <clears throat> my way of being because there's so many, um, hello, Ernest, thanks for joining us. Um, there's so many opportunities to create joy, um, to elevate your soul over um, bringing in something that you don't want, right? Mm -hmm. Praying for something you don't want. And that's what happens, right? When we, instead of, you know, when we decide that we want to be committed to worry and fear, when we hang out with them, then our vocabulary changes. Yes. And, and we start using our words right? Which are prayers, right? We know that they're, they're, they're prayers, they're spells, whatever you believe. 
but you're pulling that towards your energy and that that makes your world what you don't want it to be mm -hmm. and uh and they have company you know they come with other people so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> When you have clients that are hanging out with worry and fear, what do you, how do you help them to, uh, to shed that? Mm. Um, well, for me, um, I have a couple of different ways which I help people shift uh, the energy of their emotions. Um, I teach a class actually that's called the six healing sounds and there are sounds that are connected to each of our um, elements within our bodies based on a um, more of a Taoist tradition. So there's earth, fire, metal, wood, and water. And each of those show up in our bodies as organs in the systems. And within each of those organs, different emotions are associated. So for an example, fear is associated with the kidneys or the water element. Um, and there are actually certain sounds in Qigong movements you can do to help release that vibration from that organ and from your body. Um, so that to me is one of the most empowering practices that I've learned um, through my training is how to shift emotions through the power of your your sound, using your breath and your sound, um, your voice to send that energy away, as well as your intention. Um, of course, breath work, just simply breathing, focusing on breathing in positive energy, joy could be what you're breathing in and exhaling that fear um, because our intention is really powerful. So just teaching people like simple energetic techniques that they can do to shift their energy. Um, is one of the ways I support people. Also, um, I do energy work. So when I'm working on a person, I'm going through pretty much all of their chakras and even doing some work in their energy field. You want to slow down, Nicole, just for people who may not understand what energy centers are or okay. when you say you go through their chakras, ex sure. you know, just explain that a little bit. Okay, absolutely. Um, so within all of us, we have these etheric. So they're not physical, but they're energetic centers. And these centers are always pulling in energy from the environment. And we also send energy out. Um, and that's how we can perceive, you know, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. You know, when you can walk into a room or meet a person for the first time, you can get a sense of that person because you're sensing their energy, what they're putting out and what you're receiving through those energy centers. Um, and so each of those centers are associated, of course, with our physical body, depending on where they're located. So heart chakra um, actually is related to the function of the physical heart, as well as the lungs, because it's in that general area. Um, and you have, depending on the system you study, everyone recognizes seven major chakras. Um, in some systems, they're taught more. So um, when I was taught pranic healing, which is a form of energy work um, that was created by uh, a grandmaster, Chokok Sui. We studied 11 energy centers. Um, and there really are hundreds in the body. <laughs> so we have energy centers all over our bodies. But if those energy centers get blocked um, because of stress, where that's you know environmental stress, emotional, mental, physical stress, it starts to disrupt the way energy can flow through it. And if it becomes blocked or if the chi starts to move in a irregular pattern, it can create imbalances in the body. So what energy work does is it helps to align those energy centers so that the chi the or the prana, which is life force energy, can flow and move um, and support the body's physical organs and also emotionally support us um, mentally and spiritually. Um, so... Is that was that clear? Yeah, that's clear. I was just gonna pull in Ty here because she does something okay. with elements as well. Mm -hmm. So, from your perspective, um, I know that you work with elements. Um, can you share how you help clients shift? 
Yeah, so um, I am certified in authentic Tantra, which is rooted in um, Tibetan Buddhist practices. And so we also work with energy centers or chakras, and we work with a system that sits in front of the spine. And we work with five chakras instead of seven, where mm -hmm. there's a cap at the crown and a cap at the root, because we want to keep the energy in the body and use that energy to help heal any breaks in the energy body. Um, so restoring the connection between our relative bodies, so our physical bodies and our energy bodies. And each element that we work with uh, correlates with a different uh, set of organs and also is an antidote to one of the five root poisons. And so um, I, I start with fire because um, as we go up in the elemental practices, the medicine becomes a little more potent. So in starting out with people, especially those who aren't used to meditating or working with the elements internally, we start with fire because it burns through everything and mm -hmm. it's the first chakra. So I do that. And then I also, um, I help people with mindfulness. That's one of my most powerful practices is helping people to understand the source of where their feelings are coming from. And this is something that I practice with myself consistently. And so I always like to say, follow the trail of your feelings. So mm -hmm. if worry does come up, you have to ask yourself, what triggered this? Where is this coming from? Because there is a need that is going unmet um, if, that, if that feeling is there. Feelings are, are just indicators of something that needs your attention. And so helping people to reframe the idea of what feelings are really, are really for um, is, I think, one of the most powerful exercises that I can impart on anyone who comes into my space as a client. Um, because I think one thing that, that we've kind of attached ourselves to um, as people who identify as, as women, as, as feminine, is this idea that we are more emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Sometimes that idea validates just kind of like hanging out with those feelings, right? Instead of actually using them what they're intended for, which is to get to the root of what we need. And so um, I've helped people to really understand what they need underneath all of it. And it's a lot of self-talk. And, uh, you know, I used to think I was crazy because I've been doing self-talk since I was a child. <laughs> um, and, um, but recently I, I started seeing a therapist and my therapist is funny because I was like, why, why is she here then? She's like, you, you really use all the tools that I would give you already and you implement them so well. And so I was like, oh, okay, great. And so uh, being able to give people a tool that allows them to really understand the source of why they feel what they feel, why they feel worried, and then helping them to find solutions mm -hmm. is so powerful. Because once you understand where it's coming from and then what you need, then you can go into the action steps to give yourself what you need. I'm, very, I'm a very solutions-based person. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, what do we need to do to fix this? And so for people who may not yet be ready to enter into the realm of tantric practice, because everyone isn't ready to go there yet, then I at least start with mindfulness and helping them to um, just be an observer of when these thoughts come in, what triggers them, and um, how to shift things in their environment and also in their behaviors to support them better in just receiving what they need to continue to maintain a space of love and a space of safety. I love that. You know, like overwhelmingly what I'm hearing with both of you is that you help people, women specifically, I guess. No, you work with men also, right, Nicole? Um, but you help people to be present in their bodies on a cellular level mm -hmm. and to use their 
their gift of their emotions, right? Mm -hmm. um, to propel them like, as a power source. And that that's exactly what you do for a living. Guess what? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. We should do something Wait. together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so seriously, you know, that's what what you both said is is um, when we slow down and we identify not with what the condition story is, right? You're a woman, therefore you're too emotional, right? But rather you're a human being. And in order for you can, to connect with your spiritual being, you must recognize the alert system that is your emotions. Mm -hmm. You must recognize the wisdom that is your emotions. Yes. And understand that um, there's, there's something happening with your value system. So... Um, Wow, that that's. I I think that's uh, not often the way people um, understand their emotions or they experience life. I like that you said that you you have a therapist. I also have one, you know. And um, I think a lot of people think that that's a problem. And even though you know we're coaches why would you have a therapist? You know, there, there is benefit in, in um, understanding your past, but as coaches, we help people to bring their future to the now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so we have to deal with that, that feeling. Um, so let, let's talk about that a little bit, Ty. How, how has having a therapist helped you to propel your practice? It's, it's validating, you know, to hear her say, like, you already have all of these amazing tools and you're using them beautifully. It's like, okay, great. I don't feel crazy, you know, um, because when you do self-work, because I'm always in self-work, like every single day I'm doing shadow work. I had someone ask me yesterday, like, oh, do you feel like you've, you've done the shadow work to like move into out into the world in, in romance, you know, in, in like romantic pursuit. And I'm like, I'm going to be going, I'm going to be doing shadow work until the day that I, I expire from this body and move into the next life. Okay. So, so um, there will always be things, but having a therapist, it just, in, in times when I feel like my thoughts are getting the best of me and they're kind of running away with me, I check in with her. I actually download this amazing app called better help and um it's so great because you literally can leave voice messages mm -hmm. or you can send text messages to your therapist at any time and they will get back to you and then you can also book sessions directly through the app there's also a journal that you can write in on the app and you can share it with your therapist and so it's beautiful to me just to have someone who i can just share my thoughts with and then she can give me additional tools and she can also validate my feelings because I feel like over the course of my life um, in the past, there's been so many situations where people will say, oh, it's not that deep or, you know, you're being dramatic and just like invalidating my experience. So mm -hmm. having someone who literally is telling me it's okay to feel what you feel and then also giving me a different perspective on how to see it, it just helps me to move through the lessons faster. And then it gives me more, um, it gives me more substance to take then to my clients and more tools to take to my clients to assist them. So I just feel like, you know, the teachers need teachers. Aside from my therapist, I have mentors as well. People who I often reach out to and I do so many different things. <laughs> so I have mentors in various um, areas of my life. And it feels good knowing that I have other people to sharpen my iron against and um, to be able to then be better for the people who are looking to me for help and assistance in elevating their lives. Yeah, that's super powerful. I'm, I'm glad. You know, as, as Black women, you know, that's another 
uh, stigma, right? You know, crazy black woman going to a therapist, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, or someone who is courageous enough to deal with their shadows and, um, and work on her healing. That's the, that's the truth. So, and those are the, the steps that we have to take to protect our joy. And mm. so that when we meet people, when we meet other women, we connect from a place of, con we, we can connect with them rather than project on them, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So um, I love that. Uh, I wanna just, you know, take a minute to say that I, I love the way you, you both move in the world and, and how you are working with people. Um, if you, if you guys want to know more about Nicole, check her out at, um, healthy soul wellness.com and, um, Tayomi at cowgirlworkout.com. And, um, you know, I'm the way I'm doing the free to be show now is I'll have you guys on multiple times. Um, so this won't be your last time. And, you know, as I alluded to earlier, we are working towards co-creating um, many things. Me and Nicole, you know, we've already done some things. I guess it was, was it last weekend? Gosh, it was just like a week ago, right? <laughs> we did the, um, that's exactly what we did. You were talking about your shadows. So we did, um, what was it called, Nicole? Illuminating the shadows. Yeah, we we so we have the we had a monthly community call, and we were working on illuminating the shadows. Hey, Portia, mm -hmm. um, thank you for stopping mm -hmm. by. Um, so we've been talking about joy bonding, and I I just want to you know wrap up here tonight by asking you, um, like what are what are some things that um, now that we've talked a little bit more, um, what are some things that you would like to create in the world? Like as far as um, joy bonding, right? So we, we've already defined it. We've talked about how we experienced each other and how you work with your clients. What other opportunities would you like to create? Hmm. Wow. Um, so many. <laughs> oh, so many things come to mind. Um, you know, what's recently come to me is creating um, like a, a womb healing stuff for women. And uh, spirit has placed that on my heart um, more than once. So I guess I need to be obedient and um, just go with it. And I feel like a lot of women um, are suffering from imbalances happening in their womb, you know, um, whether it's through, you know, trauma or <sighs> just dealing with what it is and what it means to be a woman and all that comes with that. And, and maybe not getting the education from our mothers or caretakers about um, what our womb is and how sacred it is and how special it is and how we need to connect with it um, on a daily basis really to be whole and to be the full creative and sensual and sexual beings that we are. Um, and so this is, you know, some of the work that I get to do already um, with helping women with, you know, their sexual energy and how to transmute and circulate it through the bodies. I'm really feeling drawn to creating some community around that and offering um, more workshops and, you know, education, maybe creating a space um, something like you, you both have communities online where you connect to people. So I, I feel something like that coming um, for me this year and really just doing my work um, in a bigger way, being able to share more of what I do. Um, but really, I also want to do some writing, make space for writing. You inspire me, uh, Cordelia as a woman who's written seven books. Um, I feel that there are lots of books inside, eight. but I just have to be eight. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> you know, last week, how could you forget that? No, I'm just... Oh my goodness. So <laughs> yeah, just um, creating that space to allow 
the the genius that is inside to come to the outside and create you know something that is um tangible for people to also read but i you know there are lots of things that are brewing as far as you know what to birth in the next season some of them i'm still sitting with but those are a few that just came out so we need it i'm here for it bring it on thank you <laughs> what about you ty oh gosh there are so many things there's always so many things oh <laughs> You know, it's interesting because as much as I do use my voice, I've had so many people just saying, we want to hear you more. And my ancestors have been saying it. And it's like the main, it's the main message that's been coming through in all of like my spiritual journey work and everything. And so just pushing my work out into the world more through relaunching my blog and you know, I've been kind of going back and forth with myself a little bit about um, work in radio. I've had several radio shows in the past online, and um, there's an opportunity that's opened up at a local radio station here in Chicago where I've been on the fence about it only because of the fact that like podcasting is such a popular platform, you know, and I've had people who've worked in radio in the past say, well, you know, you can just do a podcast and that would be, you know, even better than radio. But this, this opportunity pre that has presented itself is something that I've wanted to do since I was a child. And I just, I've been literally sitting with myself with this today, asking myself, because the station is still looking for on-air personalities. And I'm like, ah, okay, sit with this. But Definitely um, getting back to blogging and putting my work out there more, getting back to my YouTube channel and putting work out there more and, you know, not judging myself for how I show up. Because that's been a very big thing for me as I've taken, taken on work as a freelance writer for other publications, I've had to adjust my voice. Sorry, my dog's going crazy. Um <laughs> Hey, Theo. <laughs> yes, he went, he, he's like, hey, ladies. <laughs> um, I've had to adjust my brand voice to meet the brand voice of these other platforms. And in a way, I feel like uh, I've lost a bit of my voice. And so in 2022, just returning back to the platforms that I've created for myself and then also taking that energy into other platforms where I can make a difference is, is where I see myself really showing up and also um, showing up more just in production in, in how black and brown people are represented, especially within intimacy. I feel like there needs to be a shift and a change. And I've been studying digital filmmaking for almost three years now. I'm finishing out my degree and so um, I'm happy that I now get to go out into the world and use what I've learned to put these images out here. And I can't lie, you know, I feel scared. <laughs> I feel scared. You got this. <laughs> um, yes, yes. It's, it feels good to hear others say you got this because when you're a trailblazer and you have visions of things that don't yet exist, mm -hmm. it's very easy to judge yourself and then go into the mindset of trying to predict what others will think about what it is that you want to put out into the world. And so I have very big plans for 2022 and also creating just deeper community within the communities that I've created and launching my other platforms where I can support people. Um, because as I go out into the world to be a creative, a deeper creative within production and film, and even radio, um, my coaching business has to be more on the evergreen side. And then I also want to teach other um, like startup businesses and small business owners how to get publicity and how to increase their digital footprints without a publicist, because it's something that I've literally been successful at doing over the last 10 years of my life within my career. I mean, I've graced so many 
huge publications and like platforms without ever hiring a publicist. Mm. And so you want to be able to impart that knowledge on others um, within a community space. So there's a lot that I'm working on and um, I'm definitely going to be leaning into my spiritual practice even deeper because I needed to be able to focus to move things forward. So I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is going to do, is currently doing and will continue to do through me. And I'm excited also about taking my self-care even more seriously so that I can embody what I teach even more yeah. deeply to others and be a shining example for those who do look up to me to take care of themselves even deeper. So all, all I got to say to that is gratitude. Yeah. Grat gratitude. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I love, you know, still, yes, Ashe. So for those who don't know what that means, that means so may it be. Is that correct? Um, translation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you, you have talked a lot about your words and your vocabulary and speaking life into your life and that self-talk, you know, and um, so just speaking into existence the things that you truly desire, believing that it's so and experiencing it um, as if it is now is, um, you know, that's the joy bonding from within. And um, I look forward, you know, I say, inshallah, that means if God, if Allah wills for uh, to, to see what you bring into the world next year. And, um, and I, and I look forward to what we'll be co-creating barring any more of the countries that we choose for our retreat, getting on the orange country list. <laughs> <We're having laughs> <a retreat. Right. laughs> so um, I, I, I'm pulling that into existence, you know, and it may end up being in Hawaii, which, you know, isn't a horrible place to be either. <laughs> I love Hawaii. <laughs> I love Hawaii, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> We're grateful. We're grateful for that orange list of countries. We get to appreciate America more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. So this is this has really been a joy for me, lady. And um, I'm gonna close it out here. One word um, before we go of. Um, what's on the top of your heart, you know, to kind of close out your golden nugget for tonight? One word. One word. Mm -hmm. I would say gratitude. Yeah. I'm gonna say love. Mm. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say joy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so appropriate. It's fitting. It's fitting. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, so much. Um, I'm not really sure how this sounds on Fireside. This was, you know, my first time using it. Um, but I appreciate everyone who's watching, who's here live on Facebook and uh LinkedIn, and I believe YouTube and Fireside, um, and for those of you who listen or watch on the pre on the the replay, and um, my official season starts on January fourth. So thank you for being here on the Free to Be Show, and good night. Good night. Thank you for joining the conversation. Now take the time to reflect introspect and implement at least one action be in your body be in your soul be in your spirit you know be free until next week